This is the MetaQuest 3, and wearing it is like having two giant TVs attached to your face that can teleport you into endless possibilities. But out of the box, it has a major flaw. It only really supports modern VR games. But it's hard to beat those 90s classics. So I gotta know, can you run PlayStation 1 games in virtual reality? Because if we pull this off, the Quest 3 would be the ultimate retro gaming device. So here's the plan. I'll first have to sideload a third-party emulator to the headset. Next, I'll need to acquire and install some files that are a little spicy. But if we get there successfully, we'll be able to test out a few PS1 classics on a freaking giant display in VR. Because you're watching another episode of Sony. If you see this, please, I'm just a guy who wants to play Crash Bandicoot in VR. Hello there, welcome to Studio B. My other office is obviously Studio A and this random desk in my lounge room is Studio B. At the core of this whole experiment is an app called RetroArch, and it's a free and open source emulator for a bunch of different platforms, including the PS1. It's not as simple as just installing it and playing PS1 games, but it's a good start. So let's do this. Let's plug in my Quest headset. We need to sideload the app to the Quest 3, and to do that, I'm using an app called SideQuest. If you want to set up SideQuest for yourself, check out the link down below. I'm going to just quickly jump through the install here so we can get to the good stuff. To download RetroArch, just head to the website and choose the Android version and then download 64-bit. That's the one that we have here, so we are now installing it. Has he been there the whole time? Once you've installed the APK, you just head over to unknown sources there, and if we just scroll down, we can see RetroArch is right there. Now, I have seen in a few tutorials that it's really annoying to use the app without a controller, and that's because it is straight up an Android app. So what we're gonna do is connect this PlayStation controller to the Quest, and hopefully that should make things a little easier. Pair with wireless controller. Uh, we might have to do a quick restart. Okay, it keeps crashing. Oh, did I just had it working? I don't know, it's broken again. Here we go. Ahaha, -ha. it's set up. Step one, complete. Now that RetroArch is set up, we need to now go through and install the required files for the PS1. And the way RetroArch works is you download these things called cores. And each old school console has a different core and a different set of requirements to run. So let's jump back into VR and install the required PS1 core files. Okay, we'll load up RetroArch again. Oh, it crashed. No dramas, probably just the 15th time today. Download a core. Here we go. That's what we're looking for. Holy smokes, there's a lot of different things you can do. Mac 2, mini VMAC, are you serious? Nintendo 3DS. <laughs> PlayStation Portable. Oh, that feels perfect for VR. Okay, okay, I'm getting distracted. Go to Sony PlayStation and we're gonna download Beetle PSX. Now to run PlayStation 1 games, you need more than just the emulator. You need a bunch of BIOS files and original files from the PS1. Finding these files, getting them, it's, it's a little bit spicy. It is recommended that you source these files from your own PlayStation. If you just happen to have a PS1 lying around, you're in luck. Do you know anyone who's actually used a nutcracker to crack nuts? What are the origins of the nutcracker? Way before I started going down this rabbit hole of trying to run classic games on weird tech, I spent a ton of time trying to run Minecraft on a bunch of weird tech, including the Zimmer board. This is the Zimmer board 832, an unassuming single board server. But the Zimmer board team have released a brand new and very sleek upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Zimmerboard 2, and good lord this thing is robust. If this thing fell from the sky, you would be in trouble. And if you're thinking, what on earth do I need a single board server for? Well, have you ever wanted to build your own NAS system? Or even a local media server for your movies and TV shows? The Zimmerboard 2 is the perfect DIY option. It has two SATA ports, so extending storage is super easy. And using Zimmer OS, you can easily install software like Plex and a whole library of others. However, if you want to take it a step further, this is where things get kind of crazy. You may have Notice on the side of this thing is a PCIe slot, so you can add external hardware to the Zimmer board. For example, you could add a GPU to the side of this thing and turn it into your very own local AI server, which is kind of nuts. The Zimmer board 2 specs make it an awesome option for projects and tinkering. An Intel N150 processor and dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN makes this thing the perfect local Minecraft server. And all of this is housed in a silent, passively cooled aluminium enclosure. I almost said aluminum. So if you're looking for something powerful, tiny, and hackable for your next project, check out the Zimmer board 2 with the link in my description. Shout out to the Zimmer board team for supporting this video. Now I want to know if I can play Minecraft in this thing. Okay, I've just gone ahead and transfer all the ROM files, so those are all our games, and the system files to my Quest 3. I'm yet to find out 
if it has worked correctly. So I'm just gonna say step complete. Good job, Zach, you champion. <laughs> All right, let's throw on the headset once again. We're going in. Here we are, ladies and gents. So now we should be able to just scroll all the way over here. <laughs> I wish you could see my eyes right now because they are beaming. So as you can see, we have Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot 3, Driver, Gran Turismo, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. The opportunities are endless. Huh. No freaking way, dude. Now, I don't know if our family couldn't afford it or my dad just didn't want us playing video games for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Joke's on you, dad. Still playing PS1 games. But for some reason, we rented the PlayStation Slim, Spyro, and Crash freaking Bandicoot. But I remember staring at that screen in awe that it was even possible to have 3D characters come to life like that. The music, the sound effects, the visuals, just everything just felt perfect. So let's see if we can get that feeling again in VR. Let's just do it. We're doing Crash Bandicoot, run. No! It looks like I may have acquired the wrong firmware. Ah, uh, yes, I have the wrong BIOS files. Dude, all I wanna do is to try and beat that first level of Crash. It would be so sick. Let's try and find these BIOS files. Let's plug in the Quest 3 to my MacBook. I have successfully acquired the US BIOS. It is now installed on the Quest. Glasses off. That's how you know we're getting serious out here. <laughs> Throw on the headset. Okay, let's head into RetroArch. Oh, look at this freaking giant screen. It's so good. Did I just cook it? I just cooked it. Far out. How often am I going to flip and touch the screen with my remotes? Let's open RetroArch. Let's get these controllers out of the way. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my marbles. Crash Bandicoot, Europe, Australia. Let's go. Oh! <laughs> the tears in my eyes. The very real tears. Oh! <laughs> yes, dude. Oh, yes. Whoa, that was weird. It felt like it had a 3D effect to it. Do you see my face right now? What the freak? This is it. This is living, Barry. This is living. This is so iconic. And I really actually remember never making it really this far as a kid. Was I that bad? Oh yeah, I used to... Dude, I was about to say, I used to always fall down that one. <laughs> Other than the cable hanging around my neck, this is the perfect setup. <laughs> no way. I couldn't just stop with Crash Bandicoot, bro. I ended up spending the rest of the day just goofing around in these iconic games. Yeah. <laughs> and my mind was blown. Dude, this is out of control. I feel like I'm playing PS1 in a freaking IMAX. I couldn't believe how well this emulator worked. Sure, it can be a little buggy. Oh, here we go. I'm freaking Harry Potter, boys. But nothing prepares you for the nostalgia here you get playing these games in VR. I kind of just forgot I was standing in my room. Like, I'm all in, dude. I'm all in on this right now. Let's freaking go. The first level of Crash Bandicoot completed in VR. 